Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 6, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The DA today is writing about how to deal with a fairly, well, annoying, maybe not sophisticated obfuscation technique, and that's hiding a string inside a larger repeating string. So, the first string is just repeated over and over, and then in between uh, these repeated strings, you have sort of one letter at a time, the actual obfuscated payload, in this particular case, of course, some PowerShell script. Once you recognize what's happening, well, it's not all that difficult to deal with this obfuscation technique. And of course, Didier, as usual, has a Python script to take care of this for you, the obfuscate repetitions.py. And this script, well, as so many scripts do, does take the annoying part away from you. It does find the repeating string and removes it in order for you then to just read back the decoded payload. And Kaspersky wrote up an interesting piece of malware that they came across that's actually a modified UEFI firmware image. UEFI, the modern replacement for what used to be done by a bias, is of course one of those places where if you can hide your malware in UEFI, it's very difficult to remove it and even to discover it. Now, in this particular case, uh, the modified UEFI image did write a malicious file to the Windows startup folder whenever the system was rebooted. So anti-malware may, for example, later find that malicious file, remove it, well, on the next reboot, because the UAFI, of course, did not get cleaned up, you will end up with that same malicious file again in your startup folder. Kaspersky believes that uh, this particular sample was based on similar uh, malware, a UFI bootkit named Vector EDK that was made public when hacking team's uh, code was leaked in 2015. So overall, of course, the idea is not new. Lots of people have talked, written about UAFI bootkits, but they're hardly ever seen in the wild. The one thing that Kaspersky was not able to determine is how this malicious firmware did end up on the system. This often does require physical access to the system. And according to Kaspersky, it wasn't really clear if this was the case. And one group of flaws that has haunted anti-malware software for a while now is privilege escalation. And the problem, of course, here is that anti-malware has to run with elevated privileges to have access to files from all kinds of different users. And secondly, of course, it does have to inspect a wide range of different files, which of course provides a pretty large attack surface. CyberArk looked now at a number of different major nature, antivirus, anti-malware solutions and found that pretty much all of them are suffering from privilege escalation flaws. They looked at Kaspersky, McAfee, Symantec, Fortinet, Checkpoint, Trend Micro, Avira, Microsoft and Avast F-Secure and uh, yes, all of them are vulnerable to some fairly basic and straightforward uh, problems like, for example, creating files in shared directories that are also accessible by non-privileged users and then not adjusting permissions correctly or the good old DLL hijacking vulnerability that we have seen exploited so often before. As an end user, there is really not much you can do other than hope that uh, vendors will patch these vulnerabilities, will hopefully also go actively out and find them and not just wait for third-party researchers like CyberArk to report uh, these vulnerabilities to them. All of uh, these vulnerabilities have uh, been reported and patches should be available. 
And Rapid7 produced an interesting report scanning the internet uh, for SMTP port 25, 465, and 587. Unless you moved all of your email already to the cloud, you're probably left with a couple of mail servers that are exposed and have to be exposed to the internet. And this report by Rapid7 is a good reminder to keep those systems patched. Rapid7 points out in particular Microsoft Exchange and XM vulnerabilities being the ones that they found being exposed the most. And these are both vulnerabilities that have been actively exploited for many months now. Well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.